Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm proud, uh, happy to have Mike Sowers on here. Excuse me, James, quote unquote, Mike Sowers <laughs> on here. Um, for those of you that remember me back from the, the poker days, you know, I um, I did a lot of playing, I did a lot of staking, whatever. And 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 Sowers is, and forgive me if I call you Sowers for a little while. Everyone um, calls me Sowers. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Sowers is one of the better players back back in the day. Now, again, we we've, we've spoken about this before. I did um, and Mike, it's really funny. I um. I don't really talk too much about poker in the old days, not stuff ever, but I did a, I did a thing with um, Berkey has his only, uh, only friends podcast or whatever. And he mm -hmm. had me on like a couple of months ago and we spent like an hour and a half. You got to check it out. Like just going over all the old stuff and whatever it is. And I could have gone on for like 15 hours, honestly. So every yeah. once in a while, and, and we talked about this idea, like back in the day. And when you look back, were, were, were we, or were winning players, were, were they good or were they just good enough, right? And, and we talked about this, you know, with respect to like, the guys that I backed. I mean, the, back, the guys that I backed basically were good enough to win. And that's really all I cared about. But, you know, let's face it, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later, if I took the same stable of players, given their skill set now, and I put them here, they would lose all their money in like in like a week, right? So, so, yeah. so, so Sowers is one of, the, one of the better players back, back then. Um, and I don't think we, I, I, I ever actually staked you, right? Like, no, about it. I would hit you up. I always wanted a better deal right. than your standard deal. Right. And it was funny because I just got so lucky early because I beat Durr in a heads up in like a 5K. And then he just gave me a 300K no makeup deal. Oh, awesome. And so, <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you go through times where you get back to, sell action you know how everything goes and i remember i was thinking about that just yesterday because man i haven't seen you in a poker tournament in so long and actually my buddy randy uh who used to back a lot randers i was just catching up with him yesterday and he was like you know you're into this horse racing thing but you know how sheets got his name right and I was like, no, I don't know that. So how did you get your name? Well, I figured you were trolling me when you said, well, you know, when you said, oh, maybe you can figure out how you got your name. Because I thought that was like pretty well common knowledge at this point. So, I never knew that back in the day. But yeah. So so we're, when we transition to your um to your to your new thing, I'm going to we'll get back into that. So, so one of the things I always said back in poker backing is that the two best ways to make money back in those days was either being backed by me. And that's the second best way. And the first best way is to be not backed by me. Right. So, so, so like if, if I'll if never, person, so if a person was really good and like either turn me down or I turn the, the best way is if someone came to me for backing and I told them they were no good, then they would win millions. I mean, that, that, that was the, that was the, the best way, but, but, but you were smart. I mean, smart in a way, like, listen, you only wanted to play five K's. You wanted to play stuff that, that I didn't think was that great EV and you found someone to, to, to make it work for you, which was great. Um, and so, so let me, let me start with that. Then I want to talk about DFS for a second. And then we, then I want to spend the majority of the time on your new project. Cause I want to go back on what oh. you and Berkey were talking about. Cause I think sure. it's great. I think go about this all the time. And I think about how we came up in such a golden era. No one really knew starting ranges. I'll never forget. And I owe you and uh, you know, your partner so much for poker X factor. Cause I just, Whenever I get involved in something, I get obsessed. So I just wanted to get as much knowledge. And I remember watching all the Poker X Factor videos. And that's really just like, I mean, I was in college my freshman year. I wasn't going to class at all. I was just studying poker and playing poker nonstop. Um, and I think about that all the time, too. I mean, I just think that the most intuitive players won a lot back then because you had to teach yourself. Now, you know, I've did a lot of sims and stuff and. I know that my ROI now is just dwindling, you know, which is why I'm trying, you know, I've made poker more or less a recreational thing the last three to four years, lucky enough. But, you know, coming up now, like playing 22 year olds, all last world series from France and Brazil, who their fundamentals are sick. They know just so much more than I knew at that age, just because we didn't have the tools to be able to put the math in and figure everything out. So and my, my favorite story about you was I'll never forget. We were playing like a hundred rebuy or something. And I just like three bet called it off with like queen 10 of hearts on like a lower board. I think you had like ACE four, ACE six of hearts. And you were just like, how can you do this, Mike? How can you raise call me with, with, too old, like queen high flush roll. What are you doing? You know, and it was just so funny. 
Yeah, the, well, obviously, you know, the, the funnest part of those days was because it was online. I mean, I listen, I'm all for, you know, being serious and all this stuff and people that go and they, they put their hoodies on and they and they and they and they, they spend four oh, yeah. figuring out whether to call pre-flop and they they balances their ranges and all this stuff and they say nice hands sir and tap the table. But yeah. but like to me, I mean honestly, like there's nothing better than like cursing at people in the chat box and and, and then spamming the chat box and poker stars, like rooting for rooting for rooting for for, oh, for I hated kid. you guys doing that at my <laughs> final tables <laughs> looking at your guys. I'm like <laughs> rooting golly. for kids. But you know, those, those, that was, that was, I'm telling you, that's what that, that was to me was like, that was like a lot of fun. Let's just put yeah, it. Yeah. You that. always love just having uh, people to root for, I guess. I mean, well, and you know, and what's, what's funny is that again, uh, you know, and we'll get into DFS in a second is, 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 is that's what I'm trying. Listen, I'll talk to your advice and it's probably all fun. I'm trying to recreate that, that, that environment in DFS. Um, Cause you know, we, I, I, I started this, this DFS training site. I didn't start, mm -hmm. Bobby started, I, I went along with him. And I was tr listen, doing the content, like telling people who to play, like all that stuff and doing projections, that, that, that's fine. You know, that, that's, that's, I can, I hate that. Oh, that's, like, that's okay. That, but that's know? okay. Like, like, and I, and I, and I, I enjoy the teaching, whatever, but what I really want to do is recreate the, the, the experience of like the live sweat that, that I did. You know, remember all those chats that I did late at night, I would fire. Yeah. This is like, listen, I predated Twitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would, throw my, rich. I would throw my screen. Well, you already are rich, but you could have yeah. been richer. <laughs> but I would throw, no, no, what I'm saying is I would throw my screens up there and do live, live sweat where I would show my cards to everybody and whatever it is. And that was like so, so much fun for me. And what I'd love to do is, is, is recreate that like for DFS. So what I've been doing is like Wednesday nights, I've been kind of saying, listen, 11 PM, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to go and fire up all the lobbies, see who's, who's deep, you know, sweat these last games, sweat the last hour. And it's fine, but like remember the difference between DFS and poker is that if someone wants to see like how you play, right? Yeah. Like when you play DFS, the playing is over yeah. before the games start. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's sweating, like what? Yeah, it's like not, do you want, do you want to see me go through all the spreadsheets? Do you want me to look at right. all the background on this golfer to right. see what form he's in? And, 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 and like that's, and that's 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 helpful, but it's not fun. You know what no. I mean? You got to be a real nerd to love that stuff. But, but, but where know? poker was, what the poker stuff was fun is you actually saw me play and that play resulted in the results, right? In DFS, your play, you then just sit back and watch like other people perform. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. watch the results come in. So, so yeah, so, it's so, tough so, to so, replicate for sure. Like, and just the DFS nature of everything in poker, you know, you're playing hand after hand after hand. DFS, you know, basketball i guess is the most into it just because right. you get whatever but i just quit basketball maybe two years ago like i just got so tired of the grind i thought my roi versus time invested was just so tough to replicate like i'm more of an intuitive you know even from my poker background i was never the most analytical guy i would do things that were really dumb like one of my first moves i ever made was on a final table the very first World Series of Poker tournament I ever played. You might remember it was like nine four offsuit against Mike Sexton, who's very tight. It was a ten k pot limit hold'em, and I just like it was. I had like a restill stack, like fourteen thirteen blinds or whatever. He was the chip leader. He opened like the tenth hand in a row. I was just like, well, this is like as good a spot as any. He's gonna fold unless he has like a primo. And he had queens. I had nine four offsuit. I looked like a total idiot. Obviously that's not in the tree anywhere. And I wouldn't make that move today, but it was a good learning opportunity and stuff. But do you still, yeah, do, you still do you still, do you still play poker and how much? Yeah. I mean, at last year's world series, I played every event. Like I just go through uh, time. Like now I'm not playing at all. I'm really transitioning. I have fiance now. So like oh, even DFS, thank you. Even like DFS poker, all this stuff, like, uh, I did a lot of real estate back home. 2018, I kind of uh, uh, had a bad streak. So I just decided it was time to go home, get my real estate license because my mom runs a property management company. I have to run the company. I'm an only child uh, if anything ever happens to her. And it's it was so cool because that's kind of when my DFS run started. I'll never forget. I was in Montreal playing a poker tournament, uh, being backed by one of my good friends at poker. And I was just probably putting like three, 400 bucks per slate. And it was the day 
or is the week that Kenyon Drake got traded to the Cardinals? They were playing the Niners, and no one thought that Kenyon Drake would play, or they didn't know how much he would play. And I was like, they don't have any running back. He's got to play the whole game. And so I'll never forget sitting in front of the computer and you're talking about like the behind the scenes and all this, this yeah. would have been a great footage if you could have seen this. Right. Cause uh, I wanted to play Demir bird a lot. He was like the fourth receiver, you know, how showdowns go to is a showdown Halloween slate. You got to find a 1% guy that no one has you like showdown uh, has probably been one of my biggest, best things, especially football. Like we'll get into it, but I coached football for like six years too. So I just take these long breaks from poker. Then I come back, I get really into it again, take another long break. But so short story is Demir bird got scratched right uh, in actives. And I was like, fuck, who was like their fourth, fifth receivers. So I was already going to play Kenyon Drake quite a bit. And the captain, I had three $30 lineups and probably like 10 or 15. I don't know how many of the 10 or whatever. So I have a Kenyon Drake captain. And then I put in this guy, Andy Isabella. Uh, I just, what I did was there are other two receivers. I kind of just chopped them across the lineups. Probably had like 20% of those guys. And I was at dinner. It was probably the first slate that I hadn't watched. I watched when it's football season, I watch every single game nonstop. Like I have seven TVs in my man cave now, which is amazing uh, for football season, but I'll never forget. I was on a date because I was single. I was in Montreal. It was Halloween. And my friends start texting me. They're like, you're winning. And I look at my DraftKings account. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm winning 30 K. Okay. And then they're like, no, you're winning the big one. And I was like, I'm winning 250 K. Cause I did get uh, the notification that Andy Isabella called an 80 yard touchdown. Okay. And I knew that that was fucking great for me. Like no matter what, I was going to win something. And then uh, with the girl I'm on, I'm like, look, I'm really sorry, but like, there's two minutes left in this game. I'm just going to have to sit here and it's look at my is. phone right. for a bit. And right. then I told her what was going on, how much money I was going to win. So I won like 250 K that night. And that was just, that was the start. Of and, and, and this is 2018, 2018. And, and so and that did was, you, and did you go on? Okay. So let's say, let's say that would consider like the start of DFS for you. Let's just say that. Um, yeah. Well, I started 2014 and okay. I played, you know, I'd had 10, 20 K scores, you know, but yeah. I was more just like, but do you play, did you play, did you play and do you play, I guess, DFS like every night? Uh, right now, no. Like, I'll probably play golf once the real season starts kicking up. Like, I've been doing a real estate class, and because my new state, they don't recognize my North Carolina. So I'm kind of just for the next few weeks, I'm sitting around till I get my real estate license, then I'm gonna go full bore that. But um, I played all football season pretty hardcore. Uh, and but you don't golf. play like like every day like all the all the sports like basketball and, and no and, and, and... I like golf I loved baseball like baseball was like my favorite thing especially when I was single but just like the daily grinds just aren't as fun I guess man I've done this now for eight years I always hit this thing where I just get burned out you know right. obviously you know you have huge ups and downs like 2018 250 then like 2020 and 21 were like some of my best years ever. 22 was probably like one of my worst years ever, you know? So. And, and were you someone who max entered? I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, when I you... hate, I hate not max entering. It's like, if I can't max enter now, because that's just how my brain works and like how my uh, process is. And I'll never forget even 2021, the first like eight, 10 weeks, I was working with a data scientist trying to build a model, do my own projection. Hang, hang, hang on one second, one second. Yeah. Eric, sorry about that. Um, it's okay. Yeah, so with the, so with Max Enter, so so were you were you someone that I mean, so what did you 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 put you you use like like you use the optimizers and you and you then and who'd you use? Use Roto Grinders or for Fantasy Cruncher? Like man, I've used them all. I started out on Fantasy Labs. Uh, this past year, I used SaberSim a lot. Uh, Fantasy Cruncher is always my favorite, but me and their developer kind of just, we had it out. But Fantasy Cruncher, in my opinion, is just far and away the best at everything. You like, you like, fa you like Fantasy Cruncher more than SaberSim? Have you played around with SaberSim? Yeah, I've played around with SaberSim a lot. I don't think I've cracked the code, but I, I liked it. I 
I would say I, the reason I like fantasy cruncher is because I have a different intuitive approach, especially for like golf and football. I kind of take a, a backwards view instead of a frontwards view. Obviously I'm always looking at models, projections, all this stuff. But what I do before I actually click the crunch button is I reverse I basically input my own projections based on the value that I want and how much percentage I want to get that person. So, so you so you have like an opinion on a guy before yes. you run the crunch as opposed to running the yes. crunch and then inserting especially at golf and football. Like, yeah, in football, like I don't know, I coach football. I watch a lot of film during the week. Like as soon as football season ended, like you asked, am I doing it every day? I was like so happy to just freaking take a long break because like my process is Monday, like going through every single pro football focus, looking at offensive line, defensive line data, looking at uh, who played what snaps, looking at uh, just like data like that. So, trying so, to so in DF, out. the DFS, that seems to be kind of a dichotomy and kind of like a kind of like a holy war between the, the, the people that 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 like the sport, watch the games. You know what I mean? Like know what they're watching on the field. And the people that say I could give a crap what those are, those are just data points on a spreadsheet, and I'll just run them. I'll run, yeah, that's Alex. I'll run my my range of outcomes. I'll put my lineups, and I won't even watch the games. I don't care. You know what that's I mean? Alex. And those people are probably better, to be honest. I mean, obviously, data. I think uh, we're coming into what how how much data matters. I mean, I've been using Chat GP to teach me how to code. I have no clue how to code. Uh, I, I'm teaching it now because I want to try to get into this marketing. Like my fiance does marketing SEO. I'm realizing like how important that's going to be when I really start my uh, real estate career out here. Cause back in North Carolina, I had it pretty easy. My mom just handed me listings and I just learned how to run the company. So I was just kind of doing that. Now I'm going to kind of make it more my full-time thing. Cause I want to have a family, have a more sustainable income. Uh, DFS, I think, it's a lot like poker in that you have this dwindling window, right. you know, like right. poker. We came in the golden era. Right. People were playing King six, Jack six. No one right. had any clue. Now you go play against the worst players. Their starting ranges are still good. They don't have very many right. exploitable uh, things. So your ROI is much smaller. I think DFS same way, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I really love football, baseball, golf the most because it's a lot more intuitive, I guess you could say, but not as like basketball. The models are too fucking good. If you're not using right. models and data in basketball, you're not going to win, you know? And sometimes you just have to play a guy that's 50% and you just have to lock him. Like that guy's never right. going to fail unless he breaks his ankle the first play, you know? So your, fa your favorite sport DFS wise to play, you think is golf? Yeah, I, I like golf. I think that golf is, uh, the most fair and so we'll get into the horse racing thing eventually but yeah. uh one of the things with poker and dfs the reason everyone loves them is because you can be bad and win right it's sustainable right. uh it's like the good players we don't know how good you are you know right. we we yeah. it's really tough i'll never forget aguar who you know now has a piece of DraftKings in the forums every single time anything would come up all he would say is you could play 10,000 tournaments and still never know your ROI, blah, blah, blah. And I'd just be like, man, I don't know. I still think I'm a winning player. I'm going to go win, you know? Well, what's interesting, I asked, I asked Berkey this question now, is, is that with all, with all the solvers that are out there and all the data analysis, I mean, is it possible to, to you know, import your hand histories and, it, and have the solver tell you if you're bad or not. You know what I mean? Like I would imagine so. Yeah. Cause I did this with chance. I, I sent chance like maybe four or five years ago, all my stuff. And he kind of had that thought that like, yeah, you're probably not that great right yeah, now. But it's, but it's interesting that, 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 because this is what I think about a lot. Like here, so here are the different games that I, that I played in my life, like somewhat competitively there's chess, backgammon right poker dfs so what's different about these things is that so chess if you're playing somebody it'll this is the way i think about it it's all perfect information right and and no luck in other words you see what you're doing you see what your opponent's doing and it's all in front of you it takes a good player about in your playing blitz maybe one and a half games to figure out how much better you are than the person okay one okay. 
because you know what they're doing and you know what's the right. Okay. Yeah. So, so backgammon is, is, is it's perfect information. Okay. Because you see what they're playing and you know what you're playing, but there's a certain element of chance because yeah, of the role of the dice. But in backgammon, again, like a good backgammon player will take them about usually about 10 games to figure out how much better they are in their purse. Cause sometimes there are plays that are so forced in backgammon that everybody would make them, but eventually, eventually you'll see like someone make a big error and you'll be able to tell them immediately. Yeah. What's kind of cool about poker is that it's, it's, it's a combination of imperfect information and chance because, because you don't actually know what your opponent is doing. Like, mm. so like sometimes you do like when, when the cards are turned over, yes, you know what they play. And sometimes, look, if, if they fold getting seven to one odds, for example, even right. though you didn't see their cards, you know that they're bad. You know, like if you if you if you raise and they flat call 40 percent of their stack or whatever, you know that they're bad. But aside from that, you, you can go like a, quite a while before yeah. knowing if somebody is bad, you know. And, yeah, and, we've all uh, had those tables where the guy's just yeah. mashing. Yeah. You think like, oh, this guy's nuts. But really, they just have well, well, but, every but, time. But it, but it cuts both ways. In other words. You could also go for a long time before knowing if you're bad. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and that's why it's such a beautiful game. It is. That's so why it's sustainable. Awesome. That's why it's awesome. it's that, tough to recreate that no matter what yeah. new thing you're coming and, up and, with. Too. And, and and DFS is 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 sort of similar, right? I mean, there's chance. If you that. took away the rake, uh, yeah. Eric, yeah. it would be just like that. And in poker, yeah. obviously, we deal with rake too. The big, my biggest gripe with uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, etc., has been the rake. Has been really That's climbing rake. Yeah, I mean, we're talking. I mean, in poker, our edges back in the day were way bigger than the rake. Okay. Uh, DFS, DFS nowadays, every great player, and I mean the top players. You know, Alex. Probably, I think Osimo is one of the best fucking players out there. Obviously, super smart genius, but I know Alex has had huge downswings sure. over a year, year and a half, and the site, all of this content. Now, I feel like uh, providing education value to people is almost more valuable than being a great player. You know, well, like it's, well, it's interesting, and then we're gonna get on to the new the, the new project I really want to hear about is now the pro providing the content. See, see. When you provide content, it, it, it's it's twofold. So I had this, I had a long argument with Cliff before we launched Poker X Factor. Okay. Yeah. And remember, we had a perfect opportunity because at that time, Cliff was rated number one in the world, you know, online. I was even like rated like six. That's how bad yeah. it was, right? And, 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 and I was going to be really good at, at presenting the material. And he was like, why are, why are we doing this? Why are we giving away our secrets to, why right? are we teaching people how to play right that's what i always thought well, like back well, then so what i said to him i said listen and you're being a little short-sighted first of all yep. you might end up making more money teaching for openers than you would uh than you would play and second of all this is something you don't think about is is you might end up becoming better okay yourself 100 percent by, by teaching and and i don't know if you know this like but like a hundred careers ago what I used to do for a living, I used to teach the bar exam for a living. Oh, I traveled wow. all over the country teaching the multiple choice. No, program. there's so okay. much I don't know about you. Yeah. We should just do a whole podcast about that shit. Right. And, 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 you know, and one of the things that I, when I actually took the bar, I did it pretty well. But once I started to actually teach it and having to distill it in a way that I could explain to other people how it worked, then mm -hmm. I was like freaking Neo in the Matrix. Then, then like, yeah. then it was like, I can never get a question wrong again because I was able to do that. And I found as though in poker, because I had to continually figure out how to present information in a, in, in a distilled way, it had me always challenging like, like different, different ways of doing things. And I got much, much better because I was yeah. teaching. And, and, and it's, it's very similar in a way with DFS, I think. But the problem with DFS is from a content provider, I had a long conversation with, um, I don't know if you know, James McCool. He, um, he, I know the name. Yeah, McCool he's one of Blender's partners. They, they do say, they do a theory of DFS podcast. Where okay. He's, just, he's a sharp dude. And, and we talked about this. And, and one thing I will say is that you can, you can provide content or you can play. You can't do both well. I mean, I yeah, mean, I'm you, like, you the, the before lock yeah. in basketball, these guys who have max entries and doing because I was always it's like, ridiculous. that's why I never wanted to do 
content creation, yeah. even in poker. Right. Uh, it's just because I was always like, I'm a player. Right. I need to devote. And even looking back now that, you know, I'm marrying someone in marketing and I'm like, right. God, I did such a poor job marketing myself. There were so many times right. people would reach out for an interview, for a podcast. Right. And I'm just like, no, nah, I just want to play like that. Right. I'm, I'm from North Carolina. I come from like a very humble background where you're taught to be humble. And it's like, so in my mind, it's like doing that is like braggadocious or whatever. Right. And obviously as you grow up and stuff, if there was anything I could ever change, it would be that I would brand myself more. I would put myself out there and just be more vulnerable on the camera, uh, you know et cetera. Uh, you, can't, you can't change that part of you, I don't think. You know what I mean? Like you're either the type Well, of I can change it going forward, you know? Right, I like, guess so, I guess so. But even so, even with DFS, like Bobby would always tell you, he said, dude, you, you hit for like 100,000, you gotta post that. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to. He's like, you got to screenshot this. I'm like, dude, I'm not screenshotting the hundreds of thousands of dollars I lose when I lose. You know what? You know, it's just not right. You know, that is so funny. You said that because literally that DraftKings link that I sent you is literally the only one. Like I've won, I don't know, showdown slate, I think at least twice, once for 600, once for like 300. I'll never forget two and a half minutes left in the game. Belichick down 14. And I just have to anti-sweat uh, Jacoby Myers one catch. And I'm like, this is fucked. Like, I can't hold this. Uh, Bill runs his guys out there, takes knees the rest of the game. Of I'm like, yep. thank God. Yep. Thank you, Bill. You know, and that is what is crazy about DFS. That people don't understand, especially the single game showdown is the variance is just totally yeah. unreal and out of uh, the thing. Like, I think DFS, at least with a bunch of my friends, the thing about it is, is people lose, lose, lose and quit, right? Like in right. poker, it's really tough to do that. I mean, it is if you're playing 3,000 people tournaments, which my advice for people, uh, you're a DFS creator, uh, content creator. My advice is start small, play things that you have a chance, play small fields, play 100 man fields, play 200 man fields. My favorite thing that I always tell people is the 20 max tournament, like Obviously, it's three dollars. It's a huge field, but you know, playing the three maxes, stuff like that. The five max thirty three in football, I think, is like one of my favorite tournaments. Although I do pretty much max out, and I always have investors. Like obviously, when you're playing that big, you know, I've always had investors most of my career, and I felt like it helps me. Uh, do you do you, just, ever, do, you ever, do you ever sell action on like stake kings or any of the sites like that, or? No, nah, I never did just because it goes back to what we talked about right. where it's like, but also like I have such a good group of friends and they okay. all trust me. And it's like, right. it was always easier to sell at them at no face just because okay. it's, it's just my friends. It's like, I don't right. have to explain to them how I lost, why I lost, right. you know, right. like right. I'd so, rather so. do that than have like trying to sell to random people at 1.2 for each individual tournament. I don't know. So give me, before, before we go into the horse racing, give, give, all right, give me, I know you could probably do this for five hours. All right. Give me, give me five minutes on, on, on your, your crypto career. Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Uh, 2017 learned about people mining Ethereum since $1 having groups or garages of mm, GPUs. Uh, go back to 2013 you know, I won the full tilt thing first and ninth or whatever. I had 500 K stuck on full tilt for three years. Nice. As soon as I got it, I bought 10 Bitcoin or whatever. I was taking a stock class at the time. Obviously I'm like, Oh, I need to know how to invest all this money. I probably should have just called you. Right. But one of the stock things that I learned was lose 10% sell, cut loss, let winners run. So Bitcoin went down 10% sold it. 2015, obviously, we can't play poker online. We have to use Bitcoin to play America's card room, Ignition, all these yeah. shit sites, in my opinion. Uh, and so we're introduced then. Um, then probably 2015, 2016, Ryan Doubt just telling everyone, Ryan Doubt and Yellow Sub, I'll never forget. They were just like, buy as much of this shit as you can get, blah, 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 which is great. The poker community was so tied into crypto. 
But then the more I started learning about Bitcoin, the libertarian ideas is like everything I believe in, like ownership, self-sovereignty, you know, and then the more you look at our financial system, you know, you could make all these different arguments. We could go on forever about that. 2017, I started mining Ethereum. I built a computer. I'm not a nerd at all, but built a computer. I'll never forget Isaac Barron coming into my apartment while we're at in Vegas. That's a name I've not heard in a long time. Oh yeah. He's a total OG. He's one of my best friends. So wow. he comes over to my apartment. I've just in my living room of where I'm renting the space for Vegas. I've just got all these computer parts everywhere. I'm like, yeah, building the computer, man. So I build the computer, uh, start mining 2018. I decide I'm going to leave LA. I'm gonna go back home, North Carolina. I think, you know, I need to do this right now to do the real estate thing or I'm never going to do it. And my mom just keeps talking about she wants to retire or whatever. Right. So I move home. I move into my home with my mom and we have a huge house. So in the garage, I just start building huge mines. So eventually I got up to like six different uh, computers mining Ethereum. I bought 10 Bitcoin miners from Bitmain. They all shipped over. I'll never forget. I was in uh, LA on a date. And I'm like, oh shit, Bitmain actually has Bitcoin miners available. I got to run home, get my ledger, change all my Bitcoin to Bitcoin cash, send it to him, send him like 35K or whatever it was for like 10 Bitcoin miners, go home, build that. Uh, 2018 turns into one of the worst uh, crypto years, uh, just like down, down, down only. Uh, that's when I was doing a lot of real estate. And then obviously Luckbox DFS. 2019 comes along, take a bunch of DFS stuff, put it into crypto, great timing. Um, then get into, you know, I'm following a lot of smart people. This past year, actually like two years ago, I got into Luna. It was like the big one. It was like put a few Bitcoin in Luna. All of a sudden it turns into two thirds of my net worth. Uh, I'm like staking money, earning 20%. I'm just like, this is amazing all right this is i'm like a genius i'm just printing money daily uh three days last year all that money disappears like and i have so much like on there that as collateral that i've been borrowing and then i had to make a decision like do i try to pay this loan off and risk getting all my other stack liquidated or do i just let that burn i chose to just let that burn that was probably the worst time of my life. Luckily, I had my fiance then, and I realized how much she loved me. She was always going to love me, like no matter what happens in my life, no matter, you know, what struggles I'm having. And so it was, it was kind of a weird year in that I saw my network dwindle to a point that it hadn't been in quite some time. And then also to have like the love of my life and have this amazing thing going, still traveling, uh, playing poker and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the sum of the career. Uh, and and in 2000, you know, 20, 2021, it turned into making so much money. You just start throwing money at all these NFTs, just like in 2017, when we were making all this money, we we're just throwing them all at all these ICOs. You see your friends making 100x on some coin. You're just like, let me do the research. Let me get obsessed. Let me do all that. And so it's just, I think it's so funny. I could write a book about, how much money I've won and lost overnight and how, how much that's built me as a person. I think I tried the coolest part about all this was uh, 2014 when I did get all that money from full till, I just chose to take a big, like I was coaching football for four years up to that point. And that quarterback, we had a, a we lost in the state semifinals in California. It was at Oak park high school, which is just inland of Malibu. And it was just an amazing experience for me. I didn't get to play football in high school. I was too small. I played soccer and tennis, but I always wanted to be the quarterback, like even flag football league stuff. I always did that. But that quarterback that graduated called me in 2017. It was like, my grandpa left me 50 K in stocks. I want to turn it all into Bitcoin. And I was like, well, what do you know about Bitcoin? He's like, I don't know nothing. I just heard you talk about it on a podcast. And I was like, Chandler, like, go do homework for three days, like learn about Bitcoin, all this stuff, and then call me back, you know? There are two things that I missed out on um, uh, in, in, in my life financially. Uh, one was uh, 
affiliate marketing uh, from poker. Um, when we did Poker X Factor, they were begging us to like to do uh, deals with poker stars. Where yeah. whatever, probably left about ten million on the table by not doing that. Um, they were just going to give you like twenty dollars a user. It was or ridiculous. Something, or? And we had thousands of people. It was like a, yeah. it was like a joke, right? Um, but we were afraid of like the legal ramifications of it, so we didn't do it. Um, the other thing was just I just I just missed all of crypto. Just missed yeah. it. Um, well, I, I missed it. And and, and I, do you listen, agree with the ideology behind of course, Bitcoin? Of course, yeah, of course. But but this is what I well I missed the making. I missed this the rush. I missed the ups and downs. I missed the investing part of it. Um, I did some good. I gave some good advice to people about it. Um, and my my because because with with crypto, it's the same thing for me as internet. The internet was in 1998 when I first yeah. got into the stock market, and and it is the same. All right, and 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 nothing is different. What what the, the, my my philosophy on crypto is the exact same thing as it was on the internet, and and it's and it, it is absolutely correct. Right, is that. Is that there is no disputing the the technology and the world change that that blockchain and cryptocurrency and crypto in general is going to provide. Um, that does not necessarily mean that every investment within that space is a good investment, right? And and, and this is something that that no one can quite understand. Like when Bitcoin itself was say fifty thousand, let's just say fifty thousand, whatever it was, right? Yeah. And and I would say they say, well, what you know, would you buy it here or something? But I don't know. I said. All I will say is this, it's, I said, it's possible that Bitcoin itself could be worth $2. I just said that. And he said, well, how could that be if, and then they told me all the reasons why it was an amazing yeah. thing. You know what I mean? I'm like, both things can be true. Like it can be incredibly overvalued and it could be the greatest thing in the world because yeah. there's a difference, for example, the difference between a company and a stock price, right? Similarly, it can be a difference between, and, and I guarantee you that 30 years from now, this entire revolution will have come to pass and, and it's going to be whatever. And there'll be like five or six investments from this space that have like one, one 20,000 X, right? Yeah. That's what it's going to be, but there's going to be a lot of swings and a lot of stuff and you're going to gamble and, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's not for the, it's not for the week. And yeah. it's funny you mentioned sub, I know some really, really well. Right. And, and we go back, we've had conversations about this forever. Oh yeah. Cause he's as argumentative and like, He's no, no, so he wasn't and eloquent. No, no, I'm no, saying he wasn't like, no, 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 no. And, and I no, I'm saying no. he can he can be very confident in his points no. and, and I, illustrate them well. And I know, and I knew no Nick really well. I know if you know, you know Nick's uh, Osnap, I know him really well. Yeah. So, so I know all these guys. And, and, and um, it's a it, it's a it's a really interesting space, and, and it's really interesting in general. And which leads me to 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 this next project of yours. And and I will answer your question in this way about where where the, the where my nickname came from. Because I really didn't think you knew this, right? And I, I, I didn't. Randy Haddix told me I was talking to him. He was asking yeah, so, me all this so, stuff so, about so, the horse so, racing. So I've done. Listen, and every once in a while, I'll do a horse racing video for my DFS people. Just I for saw free. that. I, I actually and, scoped your site for and a bit. Basically, what it is. Okay, so listen, I, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm I was pretty good at chess. I was almost world class at backgammon, I mean, not quite, but almost. I was got pretty good at poker, right? I was I was plus EV at poker. I'm pr I was really, really good at teaching people the bar exam. Okay, so I probably that's probably my yeah, my best overall skill. And then I got was pre I'm pretty good at DFS, and I think I'm really good at explaining it to people. But there's literally nothing that I have a higher ROI in life than than horse racing. Okay, and I ran uh, well, along with my partner Steve. We did a pick six syndicate forever on just doing pick six, uh, pick six uh, with carryovers, right? Forever. Um, we hit like probably what is a pick six explain that because like even though i'm in this i've never went to a horse race in my life which is hilarious and so ironic pick six is, is you basically pick the winner of six races in a row that, that okay that, and and if you can't and if nobody does it then that money carries over to the next day which means that there's some positive oh, so it's EV. like a progressive jackpot exactly and so it gets so big that you it's not do have so a... big i mean what happens there's no more rake you know what i mean so it becomes like positive ev to play in any case um, so that's what we ended up doing. We made like a lot of money doing that. And I actually, when I was uh, going to to law school in New Orleans, I was I paid for a lot of that by by, by buying betting horses down in New Orleans. I moved to California for a while. I did. I did. How old were you when you were doing this? Uh, law school, twenties in my twenties. I think. Okay. And so and so one of the so the the site the uh, the data source that I used to to you know to to analyze data of horse racing is called the Sheets. 
And 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 when people would walk me or walk around, I would, they would see me holding these like oh. piles of sheets, and they would say, "Hey, sheets." So the term sheets predated like poker, backgammon, chess. That goes way way back, right? Wow. So, so so that's where the term sheets came from. So so what the, the the new project that you're working on now? First of all. Yeah, I'm not working on it. Right. I'm just so an investor. It's, 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 I your just, it was, it's, it's your investor, and it's, well, a, it's yeah. a passion of yours. Let's, yeah, okay. for sure. Well, it's like the the next thing well, that just well, got well, my well, attention. Hang on. Well, just hang on a second because this is not this is not the first I, I've I've heard of this. Okay, so so what's his name? I ba Bales is, is I think a big investor in something. Okay, Zed well, Run, Zed Run, the ETH version. It was okay. like. Wait, well, wait. I wouldn't even call the ETH version. It's just like you're going to have to go back to the very beginning of this because I was waiting for someone to explain this to me from the beginning. OK, so so when people ask, oh, you do horse racing, you know this. I'm like, I don't even know what the hell this is. Right. So yeah. so so I pulled up the screen and the name of this site is photo is photo finish. So first of all, I want you to tell me before we get into it, what your involvement is like what, if you're an investor. How much do you play? And then I want you to walk me through exactly what this is. Okay, so it all started like I was telling you how you just spray and pray on so many NFTs back in like 2020, 2021. So basically, they dropped all these. Well, they didn't drop. They had a mint uh, where they sold these stylish studs, which is just a profile picture, just like all the other NFTs. So from there, they dropped, they airdropped people, uh, the female version. Who's that? And, Who's that? Uh, so the company behind this has created, have you played Horse Racing Manager or Photo Finish Live? On Nothing. The, I've never, okay. I don't even know what this, so, I don't know. Okay, no. so these are mobile games they've created. And they also worked for like EA Sports behind Madden, all these EA Sports types of things. The, the team is called Third Time Games. So I think their mobile uh, Photo Finish got like 13 million downloads. So they've already got like a vast experience in game making. Um, so then they did the NFT, the NFTs, you could breed them in 2022 and all of them have characteristics and rarity. The rarest ones make, you know, the best bloodlines of horses. So basically after that, they started a beta in, uh, I started in November. That was the beta version two. We just went the version three now, which is just all real money. Um, and so one of the things that caught my attention was just that I was looking at my bags and I was like, oh, like this NFT has actually survived. Like it's not worth zero, like most of the other ones. And so then I just started getting more involved in the discord learning. But if you pull up this video and full screen it, they are, so you watch the Kentucky Derby every year, I'm sure. This is the actual simulation that NBC uses to show the, um, whatever. And I don't know why it's being so slow. Usually it's not like that, but it's actually, it's actually probably it's an illusion for you because it's fast for me. Okay. The graphics are, are just pretty about as real as it gets for, you know, a game. And they are, when you watch the Kentucky Derby, this exact thing you're watching, they'll put all of the horses on it and simulate the race, which they did last year. I don't think it wasn't last year, a huge upset. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they had that guy winning, but uh, so basically what I did was I just started getting involved in beta and we basically had, you can breed. So each male can have like, it can, you can cult it out basically and charge breeding fees. So the highest cults in the game obviously are going to command some breeding fees and the females can have one baby every season. Each season is one year of the horse's life. So you start racing at year two. So when you have a foal, uh, they can create this baby. And after two years, the baby can go race. And each horse lasts like 30 years. So 30 months. So if you talk about a supply and demand, one of the things I've seen in Zed Run is that all these horses, they basically did the top shot model where they print the horses and you buy them basically. I mean, obviously you can breed some of your own. But the supply has just gotten so crazy that none of the horses are worth anything. Well, in this, there was only 4,000 Gen Zero tickets. So going back to the stylish stud, the Marvelous Mare uh, NFTs, you put those together, there was a breeding event, and it created these Generation Zero tickets. Now, when this goes live in April, you'll 
put your ticket in and your your horse will survive in this like metaverse. So one of the things that I love about NFTs is that you have ownership and all of this, but a lot of people aren't really into the crypto thing. They don't like the crypto thing. So this is actually mobile. You can play it on your phone. And if you look down here at the purse, the entry fee, it's yeah. Derby. So Derby hey, so 60. What, what am I looking at here? So the entry fee is 60. So go down 60, to the 60 what? 60 Derby. So you put <laughs> one USDC on here, it okay. equals 80 Derby. So it is a stable peg. So wait, wait. So one USDC gives you 80 Derby. Okay. So, so this is so one US, so one dollar. Yep. Basically is, is, yeah. And it's on the Solana blockchain. And they're so this gonna is, this have, is like, so this is like nothing. Right. So, 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 well, like yesterday, I won a race for $187. So it okay. was, so there's, this is not like a lot of money going on right now. Okay. Not yet. Cause this is still, you got to think like they're still ironing out a bunch of stuff. Like even the way beta three hit, it was like a shock to the entire community because we had huge long shots winning. And in beta two, we didn't see that at all. And so we were trying to explain, like me and a few others, everyone else is like, all the big stable owners are like, this sucks. Like my horses aren't winning like they were in beta two. And I'm trying to explain like, yeah, you need ROI, but you also need some sustainability. You need long shots listen, to be able listen, to win. Listen, 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 Sarah, I want to tell you, and this is like something I'm not going to show anybody, right? So I, uh, like, I'm listen, I'm, I'm like 56 years old, right? And, and, and I don't really do drugs, you know, much anymore or anything like that. But like a, like a year or so ago, or two years ago, like people, some people my age, like they do edibles sometimes, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't, I, I don't even want to try that, whatever. But I couldn't imagine you doing that. But everybody seemed, but everybody seemed to be doing it. So I said, to my my buddy of mine, I said, hey, you want to send me some, right? So he sent me like this whole bag of, right? And this was like like a year ago, and, and I had I tried like one once, and it was but it was okay, you know, whatever it is, it gets you whatever. And dude, and I haven't tried one in like a long time. Dude, I'm going to have to have like three of these to really understand what the hell is going on. Okay. Okay. Because so, so let, let me try to distill this a little bit. So, yeah, because this oh. is good because I'm probably not that great at explaining. Uh, I you're all this you're, info you're in explaining my head. it perfectly to someone who has a clue of what's going okay. on. <laughs> but, 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 and, and so you are doing a great job, but. And, and probably, you know, a good amount of the people are watching this. So of course, of course, of course, you know. So so when when you're saying that they're breeding these things, so they're being bred virtually. So well, and, now what? So now there's going to be there's 4,326 tickets. So that's your starting population. OK, population, meaning uh, tickets or a horse horses in the game. So there's 4,300 tickets that will become age two horses. When in we this, go live for in photo in, finish, not overall, yep. right? Okay, photo okay. finish live in April. Okay? okay, and this is why I'm so bullish on it because the supply is so small, it's going to take six months before the supply even gets going. Like, so the first year when these things get going, you have 4,300 tickets. Okay, that's supposing that every single person that has the ticket goes and redeems it to get their horse. Now, you know how. The bear market has been in, in NFTs and crypto in general. So many people have given up, you know, like even when Luna took away two thirds of my net worth, I just kind of wanted to give up. So I come to this, you put your, your tickets in the game. Now we have 4,000 for a month. You're only going to have 4,000. Now, when you turn age three, your horse, you can choose to retire it and breed. Now, if you choose to do that, what are you doing to the supply? You're taking them out of the racing. So one of the uh, metas of that first month of retiring is going to be, okay, how many horses retired? And especially how many horses that are better than my horse retired? Should I retire or should I keep racing now that these, because most of the mares are going to retire. You know, most of the people that have a woman horse are going to want to retire, especially the top ones and just start breeding monsters. Uh, and so it stinks. I guess we should have uh, shared mine because I could show you each of the horse has preferences. So oh, well, no, we're going we're gonna to do that in a second. Okay. okay. Um, so, so um, now, so we have betting open. Yeah. So you, so, so, so you click on, bet on So you could yeah. bet on the horses as well. Yeah, as you're going to love that. Yeah. No, no, so, no, right. so, 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 so click on the handicap down there. Just go to one of the races that has the betting open. Yeah. Click on that. 
Uh, Just anywhere on the railroad handicap. So if you see, no, go back. You, you clicked on the wrong thing. It's okay. Uh, uh, just click on the name of the railroad handicap up top, up top. We're betting up. Yep, right there. Okay, so over to the left, you see the yeah, this morning. Is, this, is like the the morning this is like the entry. This is the morning lines. Okay, this is this. I yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so what was funny is I always thought this was money line, but obviously it's morning line. Morning so line. these are the odds. But if you look to the right, there's no one betting on in this pool. Okay. And most of the pools, you know, we're in the second day of live betting. Okay. Uh, and so I really think that the wagering is going to take some time, especially with the race math and all this. But I've seen 150 Derby, which is literally nothing. That's $2 pools or whatever. But so basically you will be able to bet on this. You know, even if you don't have a horse, you can to, just get to, in to, here to, to participate in this in this game, whether it yeah. be from a betting angle or from an investing in the horse angle. Yeah, I, I presume the answer is since it's on the blockchain, it doesn't matter. But do you have to be from a certain state or country or anything like that? Like, yeah, they do have a geo block. So they have a map and most of it correlates with horse racing states. But. Oh, the, the oh really? keys, okay. are you in New York? Because New York yeah. is allowed. Yeah. So it's allowed in New York. Yeah. yeah. It's is allowed it allowed in, so so you you think that it's allowed in most states where regular horse racing is allowed? Is that is that what you're saying? Yes, because it looks like Nevada is not allowed. It looks like Florida. But Florida, and, and, does Florida have horse racing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Florida, I'm not sure that it's allowed. Um, and so you basically the way you uh get money on here and you say it's blockchain it's blockchain to get money in but in the actual uh horse racing and the site it's not so everything is pegged to a dollar everything is just custodied by them they keep the usdc you deposit your usdc from solana it instantly converts it wait a minute so, with, so you so that so you can't um so I, I, I have like USDC on like Coinbase, for example. And it's in ETH probably or what? No, it's just, uh, well, no, what I do is I just buy. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I have yeah. like Bitcoin and then I will just, if I need USDC for something, I'll just. I'm sure by live, they've already talked about, they're going to have, you know how ACR has a payment processor. You can pretty much put in whatever coin you want. They're going to have that. But for now. If you you would just convert your USDC to the Solana blockchain, you would need a Solana wallet, which is Phantom. Uh, you Phantom. would just download a Phantom wallet. You would take the USDC, put it in that, or you could probably just direct deposit to here because they're going to give you. No, you would definitely need the Phantom wallet. You're going to need a, a a Solana wallet first for USDC, and then you would just go here. And are those and, free? You just download Solana wallet. Yeah. Somewhere? Yeah. Phantom is what I use, or Soul Rare. I use that one for the ledger. Okay, so and, we now we now we now have an account. Yep. And okay. so, if you like the tickets there, like whenever they're still in the NFT version, go to Magic Eden real quick. I'll show you if you were interested in a horse where you would buy it. There, there. Go to the web browser and type in Magic Eden. E D E N. Which we're gonna Got, do. Actually, yeah. now, you know what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna let you share your screen. Okay, let me get my mouse working here. Let's make sure. Uh, I... Okay, so you can, I just enabled you, you can share your screen. Okay, how do I do that? It should be on the bottom, share screen. Yeah, I minimized you, so here we go. Sorry, I'm a... No, take your time. I'm I, pushed, like... I pushed my other thing back. Where? So now I've got you in a small screen in the top right. You can't find a thing that says share screen. I just can't bring up the full screen. Look at this. You're telling me about the Solanas and, and, and the, oh, and the commandos God. and oh wait, here wait, almost and the and the whatever. But we can't get come up? share screen. Uh, no. Um now look. Oh, okay. I got you now. Here we go. I had it pinned. All right. So this, you talk about sheets. This is one of my sheets. So okay. one of the keys to this game is bloodline. So each uh, color represents a different. So that looks like, that looks like a, um, like a transaction, uh, like a, like a Bitcoin, like what are you doing? a wallet uh, address. Yeah. These are the mint IDs, which are when they mint each NFT has a specific unique address. So 
I have went through and separated S plus are the best horses in the game. Uh, S are the next. And so each color represents a different uh, preference. So left turf soft, for example, are yellow. And so the directions you have right and left, the track, you've got dirt and turf, and then condition, you've got soft and firm. So you technically have six different possibilities, but there was no left turf firm. No, so, wait, no, wait, no, wait. So these are the horses you own or the horses you're looking at? No, these are just the all the horses in the game, all the tickets oh. in the game. Now, is that your spreadsheet or you downloaded that from the... So, so basically there was this guy, Steelheart, who did remarkable stuff. So these are the horse metrics in the game. These are all the tickets. And so this site is Racer's Edge dot app and this is basically if you want to know about the tickets and so here's all the tickets available right or not they're not available these are and all tickets owned. again tickets means kind of like a um, tickets are the horse they're the okay. redemption mechanism that got will it. give you a horse in the game so you can go to his site and you can type or you can just put in the ones for sale these are the ones that are for sale okay okay and i'll just show you one that i'm really proud of that and this is kind of a backstory to why I spent 600 Solana on this horse right here, $12,000. I was going to say, horse. how much is Solana? Okay. Yeah. It was $12,000. I bought this one horse. This Colt has, so siblings, if you look at these top siblings are going to kind of matter, but not for the top. Where, sibling, am, I, where right? am I looking? Over here. You see siblings. Yes, under S. Okay, S. so so these are where you kind of get into the bloodline uniqueness and stuff like that. So if you see, mine has two siblings. He has a stud that none of the other top. I don't have. know if I'm looking at the same thing. The one that's highlighted in brown, you mean? Oh no, you're not. Okay, hold on. Okay, now do you see it? E, no, now I see the same thing. That same spreadsheet in in, uh -oh. in in a different format. Here we go. Now you got it. There you go. Ah, okay. okay. Racers Edge tickets. Okay. These are the tickets. Sorry about that. Okay. Um. So these are all the tickets in the game, and this shows you the stud. Kind of correlates to what the other stuff I was showing you. So one of the things that I've learned about this game with my extensive research is that having unique bloodlines is going to be really valuable going forward for breeding purposes. So I spent $12,000 on this horse right here. It's a RDS. So if we go back to the horse, the ticket uh, metrics, so right dirt soft, there's only 3% of these tickets in the game. So if it rains and the surface is right in dirt, I have a unique advantage in that there's only one ticket that's better than mine. And it's this S plus okay, rate. That's interesting. Okay. But I have the best Colt at that field. So if you want to breed your right dirt soft and you want to have the best horse, you want to breed with my guy. So you're, so you're thinking that, that no, not even you're thinking. So, so the majority of the action in this is in the ownership. It's not even in the, there's not, there's not even any action really yet in betting, right? No, the racing, I'll show you. We can go look at some of the things that happened yesterday. Um, so what are, they, this, what are they, like claiming races too? We can claim a horse in the race? There are going to be claiming races, but since it's beta, they haven't started that because okay. they want the B. What they did was they graded, they grade restricted for now. But once we go live, it's assumed like they had introduced claiming at the end of beta. But since it was all fake money, it just it really didn't make a lot of sense, you know. But now right. that we're real money, it'll make more sense going forward for the lower tier tickets. Uh, so this is just a race that happened yesterday. And you can just see like Johnny Ringo pulled off a crazy time. And he was my race. And that how was long, how, well, crazy time. So how long, how, how long was the race for? So it was a four furlong. Okay. okay? So and he ran a 44. Did they run 44 seconds in these things? Okay. Okay. Yeah, what what would be a, a great time in real life? Like about 50 seconds, something like that. Okay. Yeah, and you got to think like, mm, I don't know, let's go look at some of the Bs, uh, race history. So this was a seven furlong left dirt condition fast. What would be the fast time for that usually? 
like one uh like 121 minute 21 maybe so this one was a minute 22 okay so yeah i think like that's why i was saying that johnny ringo he ran like yeah an insane time which right. i'm excited about because right. this was the first race um and so getting back to if you wanted to buy a horse so here i was trying to show you this earlier yeah. this guy who made this site basically has all this data and I downloaded all the data from beta two okay. and put it in a spreadsheet. And that's why I went to chat GPT. Cause I like, I know the stats I want to see, but I didn't know how to do it. So I went there to Python and then it gave me all the data. And then I separated it by which track and surface at which distances, okay. which, I'll, which I'll bring up now and just kind of show maybe if it'll do it. Okay, so if you want to buy a horse, you go to, I would go to this site because it's a great scouting. It tells you, and these are the costs for obviously the best horses. And 700 is what, 700, what, 700 Solana? Solana. Solana, Solana is like $20 per Solana. Right. But if you want to get in the game cheap, like this B plus right here costs $140. Okay. And let's go look at. And how, do you, how do you make money from, from the purse money? Yeah, you you risk your money. So see, I have a plug in on my site that will show you what the actual dollar amount is compared to the Derby. So uh, my next races today are this one, 600. Well, the plug in doesn't work. So that's like, so they put the purse money up there is what you're saying. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so it's a lot like poker tournament in that regard where, you know, top three or four get paid, et cetera. Oh, so this is interesting. So you are, so you're owning the horse and yep. then you're entering it. And basically you're the only wagerer on your horse, right? Um, uh, yeah, you're just putting you're an doing. entry fee in. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, putting, putting... you're putting the entry fee in and like a poker tournament, like you said, there's a payout structure and whatever. And then the next, ver the next derivative of that is are other people going to be betting on those horses, in, I guess in a paramutual way, with they are going to introduce paramutual betting, which I don't even understand what that is. So explain so people, paramutual. Just mean people betting against each other. That's all. Okay. So you go to here and this, this is what the ticket looks like. Okay. When you click on the ticket, you'll see the exact characteristics of it. So the start. So these, these are what are considered boosts. So every grade has a baseline and they will roll slightly with a variance right so it's so, just something like so if it's a two that means they have good early speed and if it's one heart that means that they have good heart two, yeah heart two, they're good, trying a good, to a good finisher you know and whatever okay exactly and so yeah you can learn a lot about that you go down a wormhole which i've obviously done right. and i'm not telling anyone that this is going to be the best investment in the world i'm just saying i'm having a lot of fun it's a strategic game who knows how much luck or skill will be involved i just like the idea that you know there's four thousand horses to start and then a lot are going to retire it's going to be you know probably six months down the line before we even get to like five or six thousand horses that are racing yeah, but how does that matter in other words so so you're 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 making money by you know by winning these races right so so initially but you will be able to make money breeding and selling horses so right. they don't have the marketplace here but in beta so they turned it off so right now it's just racing only, but we just did a, a six month beta basically where we tested all the breeding mechanisms and all of that stuff, which are just fascinating to me that, you know, you put these two horses together, they even penalize if they have the same father. So going back four generations, you can't mate with like familiar, uh, familial status or else you get penalized for your skill of the horse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you, and, now, now, do you um, now when they show the race, is there like a race call? Does somebody like call the race? They don't have call in yet because the AI generation isn't that great yet. But uh, like yesterday, yesterday, um, the guy called my race. Like we do have live streams, you know, but they're. Oh, okay. So I'll just show you an example. Of and this will just be a short example. Okay. Of can you hear it or no? No. Uh, no, but I. I, I so pull so it up on. I'll send you the link, okay. and you can you uh, can figure out how to do this sound. Uh, okay. 
because I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to share it with the sound. I don't know if I know how to do it, but we'll. <laughs> Yeah, and so I'm just really pumped up on the game, just yeah. from strategy version, the the in depthness, the attention to detail. I mean, can One you of, make? Can you make? I mean, it seems like a lot of work. I mean, like, can can you can you make money doing this? I mean, uh, let me look at. So, one of my friends. What's cool about the crypto community in general, is that they'll come up with stuff like this. So Jesus Christ. <laughs> profitability model, right? right? Let's say in beta, the average entry fee for some of the big horses is this. Uh, that's oh, so ROI. We're, so we're, we're, we're presuming a 51% of uh, 25% ROI. Is that, is that, is that something? So <laughs> we don't know yet with the new engine, <laughs> right, it exactly. looks like there's a lot of variance. So okay. that's why I'm collecting the data, you know, Okay. but if, if it was that, and we presumed that, this would be the value for the stud. Now, I think that once we go live, I expect these bigger horses. I mean, like the horse I spent 10000 or $12,000 on, a lot of people have $100,000 stables. I, I feel like ask. the entry fee is going to be big, right? right? So I think with, like, especially the horse I bought, I think I'll be able to sell 35 covers if I want. You know, I think I'll what be is, able what to. Is a co what does a cover a mean? A cover means you're paying me to breed your okay. mare with okay. my horse. Got it. Okay? okay. And so what's going to be really interesting is that first year when I retire, what fee am I actually going to charge? Would I rather charge 10 people a $500 or would I rather charge, you know, 35 $100? You know, like obviously you want to protect your bloodlines as you go through to make your, your bloodline still unique and not just dilute your product. But let's say I sold 120 of the $120 per one for 35. So this would be the ROI that we've calculated. Now we can go drop. And that's per year. No, this will be over the life of the horse because okay. you got to remember these horses are going to die. They only no, last no, it's 30 months. The end. Right. Okay, okay. right. So like, that is the beauty of it. In my mind, like you mentioned, Zed Run, one of the things I've noticed is that those horses last forever. And, and, is it, and is this, that's is, not realistic. Is this type of business scale? I mean, can you open accounts in like four different places and stuff like that? Does that make sense? Or, or, or... Well, no, because you're going to need the horses to race, right? So oh, okay. the, that's what's cool about the NFT ownership is that you can't duplicate that. There's only 4,000 horses that are going to be able to race day one, you know? Each, and so at, on this site, you mean? Yes. Uh, well, no, just for photo finish live. They're the That's creators of the, yeah. And so, you know, no, but what, you, no, but what I mean is that in addition to photo finish live, there's also Zed run and other, other sites, right? Yeah, there are, but I don't think any are really gaining as much traction as, I mean, what's so great about these guys is they've just kept their head down and built. They haven't even marketed. I'm not even sure, <clears throat> you know, and they've mentioned that they haven't marketed because they have been a beta. They haven't even been using real money yet. So it just didn't make a lot of sense. But now they are going to start marketing, especially they're going live in April. And then by the Kentucky Derby, you would expect some type of traction insurgents to realize like these guys are building a great product and, you know, we'll sit here and watch a race. Absolute horsepower is actually the person who built the, the model we just saw. And so that model is kind of what we've all used to try to value. What, 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 what are we looking at on the right? 3.87 X. So that is their morning line. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. And so here we'll see Palpatine. He was the second favorite. And, and this and, is and, just and who decides what the morning line is. Is there like an algorithm or something? Yeah, it's an algorithm that they've tried to make dumb enough to not just give it, give away all the information. Like in beta two, we realized that the morning line horse won like almost all the time so they introduce a lot more variants one of the cool things about the creators is and this is why a beta is so important is to try to nail down the racing algorithm all of that stuff and they will be uh getting audited and how, and how and much, and how, much all yeah, how much trust do you put in like you know listen there's 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 a computer deciding who wins the race right yeah i mean it comes back to just everything uh, we've always done right. I mean, right. we've had huge cheating scandals yeah. in uh, 
poker. We saw people multi-accounting in DFS. Uh, one of the things that I don't think you can't multi-account in this game, just because you're going to have to have ownership of the horse and you can't just have multiple of the same horse out there. So that's right. good. But obviously the trust in their algorithm um, you got to start important, somewhere, important. right? Yeah. And that's why I'm always trying to analyze the data, see if it makes sense, see if the race map makes sense. What we saw yesterday when we went live was a lot of variance in the results. And so a lot of people were like, this isn't what V2 looked like, but it was also, again, one day of data, you know? Is there, is there a, a support staff? I mean, like is uh, at the site? I mean, like- So you're... Discord is basically okay. the thing. It's like- you go to Discord, you can talk to the developers one-on-one, -on -one, which is awesome. Okay. It's a way different, like uh, back in two, I don't even remember when it was, but my freshman year of college, I had went broke. And so I was playing games again. I have a gaming background. Like I went to Age of Empires World Cyber Games in like okay. California when I was 15. And then I played Age of Empires, The War Chiefs. I won like a two week trip to go beta test the game. Oh, wow. at their studios in Dallas. They paid me like 250 bucks a day. I was like, love and life. And uh, so I think that's the cool thing is that the developers are just in the chat, listening to everyone. Today, there was a big thing about the race math and they're running Sims and they do all this, but they haven't uh, shown it yet. But as soon as they get all the race math figured out before live, they're going to run a huge audit and show uh, you know, verification of their model and stuff like that, obviously, before they actually go live. So this has only been live for a day? On the beta real money. So the previous beta ended like last Thursday or last Saturday. And the way that worked was you got, they gave you this derby for free every month and we just okay. had accelerated schedules. So how, how, how each many season was a week. How many people, I guess it's not the way to, the way to ask you. I was about to say how many people are on this thing. Um, well, is like that, I was that thinking about- question asked? I mean, like- Well, like, if you think, so going back to the ticket made metrics, right? And the guy who made this site's really cool. So the unique holders is okay. 940 people. Wow, okay. But if you look at stables, some of the biggest stables in the game, oh, looky there. I'm on top of ROI right now. Let's That's go. Amazing. That's it. Uh, Big Brain, this guy is, he's got like, He's a venture capital fund uh, on Twitter, and he probably has, I don't know, maybe 200, 300 horses. So he actually really? has like nice. eight, nine percent of the supply. Nice. nice. Uh, he was one of the early investors. He actually printed off like I was telling you about that mint. And what's so great was when they did the stylish studs mint, they cost 0.2 Solana which back then was probably like 150, 200 bucks. But he and a lot of people got in at 0.2 Solana and their horses now might be worth a thousand Solana or 500 Solana. I mean, obviously the market shifts a lot and stuff like that. So you never know. But yeah, Johnny Ringo sitting on top right now. But, you know, well, we'll I, see how long let, that me, let me just ask the same question I asked again. So, so if, like if you have... um. Um, it's the best way to describe it. So this is one site that does it. So your, your horses can't go on to like, say, Zed Run and Race. Zed Run's got their own no, kind of like No, universe. this is a proprietary. You need to look at this as, um, to me, Zed Run is like paradise poker. And these guys okay. are like poker stars, in my opinion. You know, because if you go look at Zed Run, it's just a straight line. It's arcade. Also, they don't even have like, like, stamina and stuff is like these races these horses now i raced all these guys yesterday they can race in nine hours but if i race them before 48 hours they have a chance of injury so you have to wait 48 hours to race your horse again because virtual horses have to rest too man well so uh, um i i guess um i guess i, I guess the next question is like so i guess people if they want to sign up they just go here well, you would go, you would get a phantom account. You would load some Solana. You'd go buy a ticket like this. That's not so much. Say you want to spend 150 bucks. You well, go hang, get on, hang, hang on, hang on. Let's, 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 let's do this. So, so let's uh, uh, unshare your screen. Okay. Your screen and let's, let me share my screen and let's, let's, let's actually walk through this. All right. So the first thing I have to do is I have to get a Solana wallet probably. Yeah. Go to just type in phantom. 
Let's see. And you're not going to want to share the code, though. That's the okay. thing. You can show the process, but okay. one of the so things I won't, I won't actually go through it. Have so, you? So. You have you? You don't even have a crypto wallet. You keep all your stuff on Coinbase. I have. I have a um, uh, uh, the, the word. I, I, have, I have one that's only for Bitcoin. Ledger. Um, no, no, no. It's the name of it is uh, elect, uh, um, Electrum. Wow, you have the old old school. Okay, go to Phantom App. This one right here. Now, if I if I download this, is, will this be able to handle my my Bitcoin too? Uh, no, you're okay. gonna have to convert that. But just uh, okay. go go download, then download that. You would go back to Coinbase. You would just you know convert. Mm, I don't know. Are you wanting to buy? Like, do you want me to find you a a good ticket value? No, let's um. The first thing I want to do is. I want to download this thing, right? Correct. I would download Phantom. So that's going to be installed on my device. Yep. And it's going to be in the plugin sector, the extensions. That's where mine is. What do you mean? Go to the, you see. I got to go to my phone, right? No. Well, yeah. you could install it on your phone, but I don't use it for phone. I use it in oh. my on my app. Go. Oh, so where do I go then? Um, you know the extensions top right? Uh, that little thing that looks like a jigsaw piece puzzle, click on that. Okay, it's not installed yet. Is that what I asked to install? I thought I just, I said, I thought I put just download to device, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, you want to download it on the computer. It'll be the easiest way. Um, install more and more device. Let's see. Uh, no eligible device. Yeah, this looks like it's only giving me the choice to put on my phone. Um, okay, go. Oh, no, wait, download from here. Hold on. So, oh, for desktop. Okay, sorry. There you go. There we go. So, we're going to download to, uh, there we go. So, we'll add this to Chrome. Yep. Add extension. And then we'll create a new wallet. Yep. And you. <laughs> might want to Hide unshare this. for a second yeah I'll just it's going to give you a, it's going to give you a key and that key is your private key that will unlock your wallet so yeah I get, I, yeah that that that, that I understand you know, and so. this is important for users to know too if they haven't used this write down that private key put it in a safe i kind of have like this plate that well, has I actually have to I actually have to write this down huh the private key? I mean, you can copy paste and put it in a notepad file. How do I even do that for my computer? Um, let me just see. Uh, let me see. I'll just do this one. I, I will, uh, I, I know what to do. Let's yeah. Yeah. So the other it's side. so crazy that you're asking all these questions because this is exactly what uh, they need that we really haven't done as yeah. far as just show every single do it. step yeah. yeah because a lot of the people that they're going to attract are actual like horse racing fans not necessarily the crypto community you know okay so i have that uh, i saved my secret recovery phrase now i'm going to continue you can open it all right so i think i should perfect be... okay yeah, yeah. It says you're all done and then we are all going to hit finish okay so now i'm it says i'm finished yeah now you'll go to the extension the jigsaw puzzle thing click yeah. phantom yeah, you'll enter your password or, okay, it's already there. Click on account one and then that's your address right there. Just click copy or whatever. Okay. Uh, then you'll go to your Coinbase or whatever. You'll exchange some Bitcoin for- For what? For Solana. So I have to, for Solana. Unless you, no, just put it, uh, yeah. Unless they have a Bitcoin for USDC Solana, which they probably won't. So you'll probably have to go- Bitcoin to Solana, then Solana to Solana USDC, then you can withdraw that to your account. Let's, let's, let's just, may as well just do this. Right? Actually, just do Solana. You're going to need Solana to buy the ticket on Magic Eden. I don't know what I was thinking. Just go Bitcoin to Solana and get oh, seven. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We, we got, we got, we got a little slower. Uh, <laughs> just a little, not bad. Right I'm just looking at the market to try to find you a good one under like, seven seven and a half solana oh wait hold on they just uh they rugged you no no they did not 
do that. I wrote myself. All right, let's see. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm now signed in. Hold on, let me see what, what I have on here, actually. You're rich. No, I'm not rich on Coinbase. I had to send USDC to somebody. Um, okay. So I have, what do I have? I have $3,700 on, I think, just USDC right now. So we want to buy, we want to trade or we want to buy. We want to, my assets. 37, I have 2155 in cash. I have 2154 in USDC. So you're saying I want to buy Solana? Yeah, you want to get Solana. All right, so let's see how to do that. Okay, let's we can we, we can share this part. You have USDC on ETH. You would probably buy ETH and then swap ETH for Solana. Well, let's see, how do we do that? Because I'm guessing they don't have. Uh, See, I always just go to KuCoin or um, the, the trade, other actual trade. You want to trade? No, we, we, okay, buy. Okay, here are all the things I can buy. See, just type in uh, Solana, see if it pops up. There it goes. Solana. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to buy. How much do I want to buy? If, all of it. It couldn't hurt to buy Solana, right? Yeah, how much? Well, what do you want to invest in a horse? I don't know, $100? Well, it's going to cost you at least 200 I uh, will do 200. Yep. And then that'll give you some playing around money to go actually race your horse. So we'll go two, oh, not two, that we'll go 200. It says I do not have an, oh, not 200, Solana. So we want how much Solana? Um, Just put uh, seven. Seven Solana. Or eight. It says I do not have enough money. Yeah, because it's paying with cash, USD. Oh. See if you can change oh. that. Oh, I want to pay with. Oh yeah, no. or go up just slightly above Wells Fargo. It might have been assets. No, it doesn't have my. Yeah, you're gonna have to go swap your ETH. Go to sell. Wait, hold on. What is convert? How about convert? Yeah, there you go. That'll work. So let's convert USDC to Ethereum or to Solana. Let's try that to Solana. Okay. Yep. Let's convert uh like two hundred dollars. Perfect. To Solana preview convert. Perfect. So Gives this is some clubs. playing around money. We'll convert now. Okay, so we're, we're in. So we have now have Solana. So now I guess to we have to deposit, I suppose. Right? You have to withdraw from Coinbase to your Solana wallet. Well, so close that oh, and click send. Oh, and, and that's receive. Phantom, right? Okay, so, right. so we want to, so what do we want to do? You want to close your little screen, not close the site, but close, yeah, just click on send and receive just above that. Okay. Yep. Send, click. Oh, did you click on send and receive? Uh, right here. Send and yeah. receive. Yep. And you want to send. So we want to send it. Solana. Send Solana to your address. We'll just send, send all. all of it. And, and then copy paste your address from your phantom wallet. Let me go back there, I guess. Um, and let me now, where would that be? I would have to go back. A little jigsaw puzzle piece. Just like that phantom. And phantom is so easy to use. I love it. Once you get used to it, click account. Yep. Click copy. copy. Right? And then yep. paste right here. Yep. And then paste it to the two. And it should be instantaneous, hopefully. And press continue. Okay. Yeah, I think you got the rest of it right. What did it say? Didn't say anything yet. Okay. Uh, continue. Okay. I'm sending. Hit send now. Less than a minute. Okay. I was about to say you better have a authentication on this. Yeah, yeah I got. I, I do. All right. And what's his name? Well, you know, uh, I, I didn't have anything for, with Bitcoin. And what's his name? Mycon get, got me into the uh, the the original with the uh, the electron one. That was my first one. So. I know. It's so funny. That makes sense why you have an electrode wallet. I was wondering what the hell. Micon is probably the earliest out of almost everyone in this. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, and uh, Bitcoin, as far as okay, I know. Okay. So we look good. It says it sent. Looks uh, chased a couple of seconds. Should we now go to magiceden.io. Where do I go? Magic Eden. M A E D E N. E D E N. Dot I O. 
And now you're going to go to the collections, the search collections, and just type photo finish. Wait, what is this, by the way? The Planet Mojo. So this is a, a centralized exchange for NFTs. So, okay. uh, so now you want to click search collections at the top and then type in photo finish. And then you'll see the ticket one, the second one. This one? Yep. So the first one was the thing that we originally got, but the second one are the tickets that get you in the game. Okay. Now you want to click connect wallet. Let me find you the best ticket to buy. And this is it, just a uh, phantom detected? Yep. And then it'll ask you to verify it. That's what you want to do. Hit connect. Uh, verify wallet. Uh, verify wallet like this? Yep. And then you'll sign a transaction. All right, I'm signed in. Okay, now <clears throat> go. Do you see items? Let me hold on. Let me see what you see. Okay, perfect. I think you just want to get, hold on, let me make sure real quick. Yeah, I think you want to get the fourth one. So go max screen. You see the B plus, the fourth one. What, I don't know what you're, oh. Fourth one from the left. Gen, click, generation yep. zero. First of all, click on the tick, like the B plus, click on that part. So this will show you what your guy is. So go down a little and you'll so see. So he's got, a, he's got two, third, two start, two speed, and, three finish, and, two, three stamina. Okay. Yeah. And so, and look at his right turt soft. So, so it says here, so it's it's a right preference. So we probably want to enter them in right races, right? I yeah. Prefer. And turf. Like right you, soft right. turf, if you could do it, right? Okay. Right and turf are the options they're going to give you. And now there's five different uh, weather conditions, 0% chance of rain, 20% chance of rain, 40% oh, sure. chance of rain. So now just go up and click buy now. And approve transaction. Yep. And now we're going to go and hope that no one's redeemed this ticket. Go to beta photo finish and I'll go ahead and talk to because if someone's redeemed it, you will not. Here we go, it. beta. What? Oh, this one. This. Wait. Yep. Just log into your beta account. Uh oh. Uh, current status is confirmed. Hang on. F photo. Just go right here. Yep. I'm in. And then click select wallet. Connect and this. this Yep. Now go up to connect again or whatever. Yep. And now click on the ticket. Perfect. Go redeem all. Please don't be redeemed. Some of these have been redeemed, so that'll be interesting. Okay, perfect. Now name them. What do you want to name them? Oh, I know we're going to name them. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we so we now we we've we've now owned a horse. Yeah, now you own a horse. Now you want to go to race. Oh, so hold on. So so let's yeah. let's just say what we just did. Okay. So again, for people that are doing this the first time, you know, uh, eventually what you're going to want to do, Mike, is is create like a like a five minute video. Yeah. That, that will walk people through exactly what you just did with me. You know what I mean? Because you, it is really, listen, it is really, really easy, okay? I literally knew nothing, and you walk me through it, and the whole process takes five minutes, okay? Maybe 10, maybe yeah. 15, but but it is really easy, but you probably should um, uh, make a little five-minute video to walk people through exactly that, because I didn't, listen, I didn't own a, a Solana wallet five minutes ago, right? I didn't yeah. know anything, and now I, now I totally have one. It took literally no effort. The only thing that I needed was I needed money in a in a Coinbase account? You know what I mean. Yeah. And and and, so and that's even if you go to Magic Eden, you can put it on there with your card using Stripe. They just oh, that's charge you one two percent or whatever. They they kind of get you a little bit on the fee. Right. So they'll convert it for you, even if you don't have Solana. Is what you're saying? Yeah, you can buy a debit card. You can buy a ticket with a debit card okay. <laughs> or a credit card, whatever. Okay, so now we're here, right? Yep. Um. And what, so, 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 if you, so they, they made it kind of newbie. If you click find recommended races, it's going to tell you 
Nope, click right beside the sell horse part. Yep, it'll show you what, what is possible. Now, what I want you to do, because they created grade restricted racing. So I want you to click filters uh, just above the top rep. Filters, add a filter. Nope, add filter right above the save filter. And then grade restricted, put grade restricted on. Yeah, click it. Now click save filter. And I would just put this as whatever Begin you want to name beginner it. Beginner or something? Or RT graded is what I would call this. Why, what's that called? What's that mean? Because that would mean it would be right, turf, and grade restricted. Oh, okay. So right, turn, grade restricted. Okay. Yep. And then just save that. And so now whenever you come here, you can always just pull down that filter. Now, your guy does better on soft. So you really want to find a high chance for rain. So 0% is not good for you. But There's 40. There's 100. 100% is perfect. So okay. see, click on the requirements. This is pretty vital. So requirements not more than B plus. That's perfect. So that's going to be a perfect race for you, but the unfortunate part is it doesn't run yet. So go back up to filters and get rid of the graded, and we'll try to find a handicap race or something. Oh, we could, we could, we could do it on March fifth. That's fine. But wait a okay, minute. Okay, perfect. Yeah, if it's open for, it's not going to be open for entry though. See how oh. it says entries open in a day. Oh, but if you were a smart person, this is going to cost a dollar for you to run your first race and it's going to give you information on your horse. All right. So on. let's, 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 let's do this. So, so once again, we're going to go find, wait, so we want to confirm entry or no, no, no. Well, no, cancel. I would get rid of the graded portion of the filter. All right, cool. Yep. And just put not grade restricted and you don't have to save this one. Okay. And, and save it. No, nah, I wouldn't save it. And so we get, once again, we're looking for right turf and uh, here it is and, and, and rain. Yep. And so look on the requirements. Okay. Yeah. And so you, this kind of horse, these lower grade horses, you at least want to enter a handicap because the handicap is going to throw weight on the bigger horses and it's yeah, going to try right. to even the play and field. Right. So I would say keep going down, kind of. I would keep looking until you see a here's handicap. Another, here's another hundred percent. Um, how do you know if it's handicap race? It'll say handicap. Where? So that's not. It oh, says okay. like at the top one is Washington handicap. Yeah. So you your probably best bet is to wait for that okay. race. Here it is, Independence. Oh handicap, yeah, a hundred percent. Hundred percent rain. There, the, yeah. Click on the it's handicap. Not till tomorrow, but whatever. Come back. Yeah, here. yeah. Well, you're you're pointing on the wrong one, but the independence handicap. Yeah, that's oh. one. Oh, but it's a it's six hundred dollar entry fee. I mean, oh. not six hundred dollar. It's going to be about a four dollar race, and I don't think that you really want to put this thing in a four dollar race. You probably, okay. if it's a grade restricted like the one we saw, then you could put it probably up to like ten dollars. You know, like you could risk everything or you could risk as much as you want. The other thing that we did not do is we did not fund your account with Derby. What do you mean? So at the top, you see how you have zero Derby. So right. even if we wanted to enter a race, we couldn't do that. Oh, okay. So the way that I do this is go to a website, type in orca.so, and we're gonna convert your Solana into USDC on the Solana blockchain. Oh, okay, orca. So, and this is a decentralized exchange. So you can go here, you'll connect your wallet to them. So connect wallet. Oh, so first. And you just want to flip those. Yeah. So connect wallet first. Connect wallet first. Oh, that's really fast. Connect. This is why crypto is amazing. <laughs> now you flip that, that thing right there and you just press max because you're going to want to use all your money to gamble. To enter some races is that, and yeah. that's half of it yeah that's oh, fine so how do you do all of it then you click max right above there oh okay uh you need to put just slightly less like so oh, for the fees two, for the fees yeah, and stuff? yeah which solana fees are like zero compared to eth which is another Air reason price, i love it now hit trade yep 
not enough I saw. Um, okay, just put 2.2 in there. Because you're going to want to leave yourself some to make uh, future transactions anyway. Okay, now go back to the photo finish live site. So hold on. So we traded our Solana for USDC. Now we're going to go back to photo finish live. And you're now we're going to buy that stuff, right? Yep. So and you're going to click fund wallet. And then. And I'll do the conversion for you, but. Well, what are, what are we trying to do? We're trying, so we're trying to convert Solana into Derby. No, USDC into Derby, right? Yeah, and we said it's one. Well, let's see what it says here. Hold on. So this says estimated USDC price $1 for eight. You can afford 3,680 Derby. So I would type in 3,680. And they should probably clean this up a little bit. So $46, 3,680. Yep. Okay. And, and add, add funds. funds. Uh, Phantom Wallet. We know this. Yep. What is Beanmo? Oh, that's the name. Of, okay. That's their aggregator or their payment. So basically, process just keep on keep on approving connecting wallets like all over the place. Okay. Yeah, I have, you want to be careful for that on other websites, but okay. this is a trustworthy website. And I know yesterday I went through, or some people were having. Um, there it is. Thank issues. you. There it is. Okay. Don't you redirect me back here. Yep. And now should we close this? Okay. So now, now we can. Oh, now we have three point six eight, uh, three thousand, whatever. Yeah, and I can send you a plugin because I have a plugin that converts everything to dollars just to make it easier for my brain. All right, so so then we'll, let's we got let's go back then, right? We'll go yeah, back. Yeah, now you want to go back to the races. Let's see where we go. Races. Uh, these are betting open. No, no, we want open for entry, right? Yeah, it looks like to me. Well, you could probably enter that. Yeah, just enter the forty percenter and this hope one? that no, the one right below that. If you just want it, I mean, because it costs what. 60 cent let's just run yeah, a race, right? <laughs> let's, let's, yeah so what do we do what, what do we do click on well Mission. first requirements let's make never want to race that's good for me yep and then just register and then you're going to be racing today at two o'clock east right. well we're gonna so i gotta click, remember to click, come back i gotta remember yeah, to come back here you gotta re-click uh beside that because you got to confirm it you see beside your zero 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 no uh, okay, so start, go to the right, near where your preferences are, right to soft, career earning starts. And then there's a little checkbox right beside there. To the right, see that little empty box? Going to have to, boop, there we go. Yep. And I made them add that because a lot of times it was just, you would enter a race accidentally rather than, boom. So we're, so we're in, so then, so if we remember, so if, if I remember at 2 p.m., we're going to come back here and then they'll, they'll show this race, right? Yeah. You'll get to watch it live. All right. So listen, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to post this uh, soon. I, I want to timestamp this in a, in a, in a, in, a, in an intelligent way, okay. but um, I'm going to put this up on, on YouTube. I'm going to publish it. I'll probably put it on my two DFS site. I don't know exactly where, but I'll put it somewhere. Yeah. And, I, and, and anytime, I, if you want to talk DFS, yeah. poker, life, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. So. I, you know what? Um, uh, this is gonna this is gonna sound weird, but 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 you're it's gonna sound like really weird, but you're, you're much smarter than I thought you were. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's why I kind of won so much money playing poker. Is everyone looked at me like I'm a southern idiot, right? But luckily, uh, I had good. a good family, a good mom. Uh, all good, all good. So. And, and and one one might say you probably get this from your your family a lot. Is 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 one might suggest that your brain should be used for something else, but that's that's for. Well, and I'm sure you have that discussion as well. But well, um, that's why I'm choosing to go to real estate more full time and just go all in and stop yeah. trying to do things that well have so much variance. Else, you, know, you know who has a um, who has a really really just really awesome uh, uh, B, uh, Airbnb uh, uh, business now. You know um you know Shane Sigsby. Uh, Shane Shegler? No, 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 not oh, Shane. No. Shegler. no, Shane Sigsby. He he ran like a, a big uh, staking uh, company actually called I'm a Whale, um, and and he is actually like almost a professional golfer as well. He's one of the the 
big one of the biggest sports betting syndicates in Las Vegas, Las Vegas now. You look him up; he's pretty easy, easy to find. But one of his main businesses, he, he runs a, a whole bunch of like Airbnbs, like in the, in the Alabama region. And he's a real kind of like super sharp, like software driven approach to to figuring out which 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 sites are going to generate the most income and stuff like that. And it's 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 it's, it's kind of cool to see like a poker mind kind of like just apply that to like real estate. You know? Dude, that but, is exactly like one of the things I've been doing with this is trying to analyze all the data. And yeah. it's not so much to do this. I hope this succeeds. You know, you never know. But I want to do that because I want to start macro data. Uh, doing stuff like that like even the broker it yeah. just all lined up because the broker i'm working with is an investment uh guy who also does a lot of data breakdown stuff so i love that stuff so yeah I'll definitely link us I'll, I'll reach out to him but i, I appreciate that all right you're the man i will catch up to you later yeah for sure go Thanks. on go cookies are yummy <laughs> all right later, later.